Hello, friends. Welcome back to Love Wrestling. Spencer Love here, getting the opportunity to chat to another great professional wrestler, another personal favorite professional wrestler, and luckily enough, someone I've had the opportunity to chat with before. Sean Moore, the Matt Messiah, a PWA Commonwealth Champion, an HIW Grand Champion, and a hell of an individual joining me today. Man, how are you doing? It's been about a year since we last chat. We started right at the uh, right at the start of the pandemic. How's the last year been? Ah, uh, it's been a roller coaster, man. <laughs> I've been through, <laughs> I've been through, obviously whole world shutting down, and then um, wrestling has been kind of at a standstill, especially here in Canada. Uh, mm-hmm. so, so everybody's been trying to keep on keeping on, trying to keep up with working out, trying to practice as much as possible. So I know, like, at every, any, speaking for everybody in Canada, getting to a record, especially depending on where you live. So it's just trying to make the best out of the situation as much as possible. Mm-hmm. Have you had the chance to wrestle? Like going through cage match for as reliable as it can be sometimes. It looks like you haven't wrestled since last year or 2019 even. Have you had the chance to even get in a ring and maybe roll around or try anything as far as that goes over the last little bit? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I've been fortunate that like I've been able to find some tra- places to train. Um difficult especially in saskatchewan that we don't have a ring uh in regina um i think there's a ring in saskatoon but again that's two and a half hours yeah to a ring to potentially train so it's been pretty difficult for a lot of us you know yeah driving two and a half hours for a maybe isn't always the most exciting circumstances i would have yeah to yeah like um <laughs> <laughs> like me and uh davy o'doyle have driven to calgary and we We'd, um, with Mo, um, uh, what's the, I can't play. <laughs> I'm I think blanking on the, the workhorse, uh, the work workhorse course fit. There we go. Correct. Perfect. Yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, around, uh, last time, last year, like summer slash like, um, fall, we were training out there for a little bit. So we would take trips, go down, train just to get some ring time and stuff. Um, definitely, like I said, keeping up on fitness, um, bodybuilding, whatnot, you know, so that's been going pretty well, but. Mm -hmm. on the mental end of things you know and it's it's a bit of a cliche question even for me at this point on to ask on the podcast but I think a lot of people in pro wrestling can look at the physical side and sort of make a lot of assumptions there mentally though have you been watching a lot of match footage or how have you sort of stayed prepared for a return to the ring on that end of things Uh, um I've been watching uh, there was a point where I kind of because I was so frustrated with how the pandemic was going (laughs) and the stuff that you know you felt like you was on uh, i lost the ability to watch wrestling for a little bit which is strange oh, because like i yeah i could watch wrestling at any time <laughs> at any time any <laughs> point like um luckily i've gotten back to that work so i watch i watch every anything um whether it's on the indies whether it's in japan united states england mexico because mm-hmm. i was yeah, gonna say like if it's wrestling i'll watch it if it's 19 19- yeah, I was going to say, like, the last time we spoke, you were talking about, you know, being a student of the game and literally watching professional wrestling religiously. It's, I guess, one of the reasons I was so excited to ask you about it is, as someone who's such a student of the game, like, what can you do right now in order to keep yourself prepared for it? But it's good to hear you've been able to get back in the ring. It's good to hear that on the mental side of things, it hasn't been as much of a kick as it can potentially be for some people out there. It's glad to hear, man. As far as it goes, though, like, do you have any idea of the next time you'll be back in a ring or or what Saskatchewan or wherever else you could potentially be wrestling looks like? Um, it all honestly depends on when the restrictions lift, because, you know, as you know, everybody wants to be as safe as possible uh, yeah. to make sure they follow all the protocols, wrestlers, promoters, fans, because everybody wants to work as hard as possible so that we can get through the pandemic and then be able to be in the ring in front of people and, you know, do what we do and people can enjoy what we do. So it's just kind of a, you know, cause I see things are starting to open up a little bit. So I, I know people are kind of hoping that maybe the summertime that we can start wrestling and start doing that kind of stuff. So I'm hoping that that takes place because <laughs> that's, <laughs> that'd be good. You know? Yeah. You and I both have our fingers crossed on that one. As far as it's concerned, yeah. don't you worry there. <laughs> <laughs> 
it's one of the topics that's come up a lot and you sort of alluded to it there, but um, as far as especially with the Canadian end of things, maybe how Canadians or maybe how should Canadians uh, be using this time as professional wrestlers to get their names out there when you're not having shows, when you're not doing stuff like that. It seems to be one of these hot topics that seems to come up every few months on Twitter nowadays, you know? Yeah, no, uh, it's a, obviously it's a huge topic for me as being a Canadian wrestler. Um, and it's something I feel strongly in. And uh, honestly, the, the, what we need to do is reevaluate ourselves as wrestlers because it's no secret that it is extremely difficult as a Canadian wrestler to get to the next level where we live and uh, the situation of getting a visa and being able to work in a different country. So, you know, it's a combination of everything. We need to focus as much as we can on training our bodies to look the best, right? You know, if, if you're a Canadian wrestler and you're wanting a company like a WWE or, or a new, and want you to be something, we need to be the best of the best. Sometimes some people hear that and they go, well, that's not fair. But I mean, like, how, well, how many Canadian wrestlers do you know that get signed that aren't good? Yeah. No, they're all fantastic, <laughs> I was gonna say, right? That's exactly and, it. And it's, and it's, it's, and it's because of how hard we have to work as Canadian wrestlers. You know, that's a as hard as it is to get to make it. It's a blessing in disguise because it allows us to do better in the ring, get better with our bodies, to get better with our promos. You know, um, in Ontario, there's those guys doing the backyard pro and super kicks videos, and they're trying to do stuff as much as possible as they can to to apply themselves and to you know show everybody else what they can do. I know that there's some guys in Ontario pandemic had gone to Germany and gone to the UK and you know went to go and put themselves out there um in Winnipeg you know Tyler Colton is all over the yeah he's out here you know putting himself in front of people Danny Duggan's doing tours all up and down the country you know in Saskatchewan right like myself Dick Doyle uh, Michael Allen Richard Clark we travel up and down Canada America trying to do what we you, you know, Michael Blaze, Mo, uh, all those guys in Alberta, BBD, you know, they're out there putting on the craziest matches that people can see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that, <laughs> when Blaze did the thing with Teddy Hart with a Canadian destroyer off the lot, like what I'm saying is, it's like in each of our, in each of our own board are trying to do what they can to show how good Canadian wrestling is. Like, again, with the first clandestine show when Artemis uh, and Nicole Matthews came down and they, you know, in Alberta, they showed what BC is all about, you know, across the country from like, you know, east to west. Every, you know, eventually we're going to be able to, you know, people are going to take notice. So like I said, it's like everybody's just going to keep on, keep it on, keep on working hard and it's going to happen. You know, <laughs> some of us are going to be able to get to that next level. I honestly believe that. Yeah. I completely agree with you there, man. I don't think I need to tell you about the Canadian bias I've gotten professional wrestling. <laughs> it might sound a little bit silly to say, Sean, but like, was that something that was sort of imparted, I guess, from Lance Storm? Or did you have to figure that out when you got into your career? It seems like if there's anybody who would be a bit of an authority on Canadian professional wrestling, Lance Storm might be a pretty good candidate for that to completely undersell it. <laughs> uh, he was, Lance Storm is very honest. Um, He, like, especially with training and stuff, he doesn't, you know, fake anything. You know, he tells you exactly how difficult it's going to be and how hard you have to work, you know, mm -hmm. uh, to see exactly what we're doing and, and how we're pushing forward. So um, from the very beginning, uh, Lance Storm and other wrestling veterans from Canada, you know, they explained exactly what the situation was like and kind of what, you know, we need to do in order to progress and Kind of like I said, like our current generation of wrestling is really trying what they can to to push forward. So I know it's frustrating at times for a lot because especially during the pandemic, like again, it sucks that we can't wrestle, but we also have to think that our country is being extremely safe when it comes to the pandemic, so that we can wrestle. You know, so it's a two way sword, but we have to look at the positives of both of them. And like mm -hmm. I said, it's like what it's doing is it's making Canadian wrestling hungrier and ready to fight more and want to progress further so you know i, I gotta respect that 
I agree, man. And when I was going through and doing the research for this, one of the guys who I think both ties naturally into what you just said there, but also put on a hell of a match with you a couple of years ago. Tell me a little bit about your experience with Mark Wheeler. I've only really discovered him throughout the pandemic as again, one of those Canadians who's really getting out there trying to be an ambassador for the sport, but is also a guy, again, you just had a great match with him a few years ago that I really enjoyed watching. <laughs> Um, yeah, Mark, we, I met him at, uh, we did a tryout for Impact Wrestling, um, at 2017, 2017 or 26, I can't remember what year it was, but we had a, that was the first time we met and we wrestled each other at tryout, and then I started training, uh, at Super Kicked, and then we wrestled at Super Kicked and did some matches then, mm -hmm. and it was like instant chemistry from the time that we, we wrestled each other, and, you know, we were both fairly new at that point when we started out, and yeah, it it was, and he's doing, uh, he's like me. He loves to work out in the gym. He loves to, to he puts so much content on Twitter. Like, if you're not following, I'm yeah. sure it's at Mark Wheeler. Uh, but yeah, he's a, he's a fantastic guy. And like, you know, there's certain guys in the, you know, you meet in the wrestling industry and you never forget what they did for you. Like, I, I, about this before, but I remember in that time period, I had lost a lot of confidence in myself in wrestling and training at Super Kicks and wrestling with him. Uh, built back a lot of confidence. So that's something that I will always be appreciative of because without that match and without that experience, you know, that wouldn't have me to go to the next step. So I'm always appreciative of that. Did you notice a lot of differences, even, you know, five years is an eternity in professional wrestling, but it ain't that long of a time span. Did you notice any differences in, in maybe the training or maybe the mentality or anything along those lines? I've had the chance to talk to a lot of uh, professional wrestlers in Ontario over the last little bit. When you bring up stuff like Backyard Pro and Go Hard Pro Wrestling, I think you're starting to see it come out here in Alberta, but I think it also seems like they got a little bit ahead of the curve on that sort of thing, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um... Like, uh, yeah, I, I definitely think, uh, you know, the experience is in terms of, like, uh, people being more creative. Uh, I think that that has definitely been a problem in Canadian wrestling is the... Um, in, in, a, in one sense, it's great because we learn the, the basic style of professional wrestling the best, like the old school stampede style, for example. We are phenomenal at it. <laughs> There's a lot of other places that aren't as great as that, like old school stampede, mid-south mid style of wrestling. Like that's what we grew up with uh, here. But the creativity of, like I said, like a super kick or like a, a yard pro where they're, you know, coming up with different ways to present uh, professional wrestling. I think that we're starting to, like with a clandestine show, for example. You know, that had so many vibes of like um, the very first chapter of progress, you know? Um, yeah. That's that had, a perfect comparison. Right. So, yeah. Right. So that's what I'm saying is it's like that, that kind of vibe, you know, we're starting to like bring over here. And I think that with a company understanding the basics in Canada so well, and now coming up with our own creative style uh, that we're taking from other places. And like I said, it's great that so many of us are, um, extending our branches to other countries because we can now learn from other countries and then bring it back and create our own type of style. Mm -hmm. so like using super kick as an example, right? Like when, when they have fans there, there's, there's, you know, there's no railing. The crowd is like right by. They're similar to old like WXW shows in Germany, you know? Yeah. Um, like I, like I said, the clandestine show is so similar to progress but different in its own way and like again everybody takes kind of you know an example of like the indie style of wrestling but like so for example Davey O'Doyle he's such a character work guy that you don't yeah. see as much in he's like such an old school you know like hit like um the sass boys right such an old school style of of like you know bad guy right same thing with Michael and Richard Clark you know so it's like Binding everything because at the same time like they can do all those kind of crazy moves and stuff whereas you've got a guy like Bla michael blaze who's such a talented like in ring the craziest moves that you can think of like play a video game and do a crazy move and blaze is going to put it out there and rest <laughs> you know? right 
uh, you know, for like for my, myself, right? Like, you know, I like to bring a very hard nose um, technical style. Mm-hmm. In the ring, very similar to early 2000s RH, early 2000s, you know, ruthless aggression era style. That's that's my, you know, kind of right. So it's just like what we're doing is slowly developing a Canadian style, right? Like you see it with Josh Alexander and Ethan Page. Yeah, perfect right? examples. Right. Ethan Page is, you know, such a great character, you know. Mm-hmm. Josh Alexander, such a great mm-hmm such a hard nosed wrestler but like it's like these are snippets of what canadian wrestling is and then getting to see that on the main stage you know we're slowly going to be able to get people into that level from all across canada i believe <laughs> i don't disagree with you at all man you touched on <laughs> roh there i had to ask specifically you about it what did you think of the pure tournament i loved it that's that's, so my, good, that's hey? my jam man that's, yeah, that's my man. style yeah, yeah. Uh, again, like for me, it's from my background doing amateur um, and and what I love in wrestling. The the being able to like creative like creatively think about how to wrestle within a confined set of rules to me is so interesting and like to me is such a test of how good you are in the ring to be able to sit mm-hmm. there and be like in my match I have to focus on trying to win this match with only being. Able able to use three rope breaks how do i win this match without using a closed fist because if i use a closed fist i would get dot points right like to me that's the, as creative as it gets in wrestling like it's such a simple concept but it forces you to think um, to wrestle a rules match and, and you know work out that way Yeah, and easier is not the right word. I will concede that off the bat. But like, in your opinion, in your experience, would you say it's it's easier than to work, say, like a no DQ or something with a little less rules than something like a pure tournament match or a pure style match? Are are you saying like a no DQ is easier or the pure rules is easier? I feel like for just from the description you gave, like when you're having to consciously think about, oh, the three rope breaks, all of that versus a no DQ where it's like, well, I just got to win. It seems like that would be, again, easier is not the right word, but maybe less mentally well, taxing, I suppose. I, well, yeah, because like a, a no DQ match or, you know, like a, a grudge match, for example, is, uh, for me, would be an easier match. Mm-hmm. match because you can, you know, again, I'm like, I just don't like that guy. So I'm going to <laughs> attack him with a weapon. My focus <gasps> is, uh. is to use whatever far our jet is yeah absolutely right um versus where um this might be a different take is that i would find a death match Hmm. harder than a no dq match because you have to with an odq you know you're told to just swing at an opponent right like it's anything yeah but you have to creatively think of how do i do anything i can but i have to be able to stay away and survive, you know, broken uh, bulbs, uh, barbed wire. Um, how do I sit there and convey my emotions mm-hmm. within this confine? So it's like, it's just no different to uh, like a Lucha star match. Uh, I don't get Lucha personally. <laughs> um, but like having to like be able to come up with a, a way to formulate a match where it's just, it like so emotional at the same time that's genius bro i can't come up with that man (laughs) you know well fair i'm glad i'm not completely out to lunch as far as that goes like i said i would i would have to assume that just going out there to beat the hell out of someone is a lot easier than having to like think about how to do it tactically right but let's pivot a little from there because we've talked about travel we've talked about wanting to get back traveling and that being a huge conduit for you You've trained at the New Japan Dojo a number of times. I know you've gone down with Davey O'Doyle and all of that. Just take me through the experience of that if you can, because I would have to feel it would be just a very, very, you know, no pun intended, but a very foreign experience from training with HIW and Storm and all of those individuals. Uh, it's crazy. Like um, this year in a pandemic, I, I trained at the New Japan Dojo. Um, so that was where I was able to train. So I was very fortunate with that opportunity. Um I have so much respect for the 
those guys at the dojo. Like people do not understand how hard they train to get to the level that that's why they look fantastic. You look at all those young lion guys like Clark Connors, um, Carl Fredericks, Alex Coughlin. You know, look at the shape they're in first. Just look at their bodies. You know, yeah, the true. Training that they go with other and stuff is A1. And anybody who can get through that training and do that training is next level pro wrestling. Um, yeah, the training was was fantastic. And it, it helped build me so much as a, as a wrestler. Because uh, I was very fortunate with the opportunities like um, that, the Super J Cup and at the recent tapings for New Japan, uh, working in the corners, you know, with the Young Lion program and stuff. Mm-hmm. That. So I was very fortunate to see uh, what those guys were doing in the ring and to be able to to be out there in front of everybody, you know, like to, to watch, uh, you know, Moxley and Kenta have up close in person and be able to learn from those guys whilst I was out there um, was fantastic. And, you know, nothing but respect for, you know, the, the, the young line guys as human beings and as training partners, because it, it's exceptional and the brotherhood is real over there and you know like that's the one day is like from wrestling in canada wrestling in the united states um with uh glory pro kld like again shout out to him because he was fantastic he's been nothing but good to me um and then training with those guys at the dojo the brotherhood of i you know with everything that's gone on bad wise in pro wrestling i hope that people understand that there are so many good people in the industry and like Tyler Cotton, for example, you know, big shout out to that guy. That guy has helped me out <laughs> in so many ways uh, that I don't even think he understands. So it's just like, you know, people are good in wrestling and I want people to know that, that <laughs> people are good. I don't, yeah. I don't disagree with you there at all, my friend. And I think that it summarizes everything I believe in pro wrestling. And I think for that reason is a great place to close off at least this edition, because man, I told you last time, I'll tell you this time. I can't wait to have you back on the show. You're one of the best people I've met in pro wrestling. And like you said, there are a lot of great individuals in it. If people want to keep up with a great person in pro wrestling and a great pro wrestler, where can they follow Sean Moore? Oh, um, at Sean M. Fit. Because I made that Twitter account (laughs) years ago and I could never remember the handle for it. So just give me two seconds. (laughs) This is a bad plug. Uh, it's okay. Don't worry. We'll vamp. They'll all be in the show notes. It was a bad idea that I can't remember what my Twitter handle was. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's, and uh, nothing against Sean... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Underscore more three. <laughs> well, and you know what, man? I've never professionally wrestled, so take my advice for what it's worth. But Tommy Dreamer seems like he's done some good things. I'd maybe I... find a new Twitter handle or whatever Instagram handle. <laughs> <laughs> Sean, man, it's been an absolute blast, dude. I can never say that enough. Thank you for the time. Thank you for hopping on the show and can't wait to do it again. Yes, thank you. Thank you very appreciate it. And thank you for helping everybody out and let everybody's voices be heard, man. That's what I'm here for. Friends, if you want to hear more great professional wrestlers, hear their voices be heard or let their voices be heard, including in the future when I have Sean Moore back on the show, give us a like, a share, a follow, wherever you may be watching this video, whether it's YouTube, Twitch, Facebook Live, or some social media platform we haven't ever heard of before. However you've watched, continue to do so right here on Love Wrestling. I've been Spencer Love. Thanks once again.